about whether or not I'm going to call these directed energy weapons or plasma fires. We're going to talk a little bit about that now. That yes, there is an ambient level of plasma in the atmosphere, just kind of like background noise, right? Of plasma. That's why Mr. MBB333 catches a reading of UVC that's supposed to always be zero at ground level. He says that in every one of his UV reading videos. It's always supposed to be zero at ground level. Other than in the North and South Pole, where there's no magnetic field to keep that solar radiation out. The reason he is always, without fail, every single video catching UV readings of UVC in the extremely dangerous range, up in like the 60s and even 70s, the highest one he calculated or caught was like a 70. He calls it like Team UV. Him and four or five other people around the country that take these UV readings. They're typically in the 40, 50, 60 range on the UVC. UV A and B is always up in like 12, 10, 11, 12, which is the dangerous range. UVC in the 40, 50, 60, 70 range isn't in the dangerous range, it's in the impossible range. Because it's always supposed to be zero at ground level, just like he said, and that's how it always has been. Until now. They're like butt flies. They like to get right on your back corner and just hang there. You gotta swat them away with your tail. Which is your brake. And let them pass. Anyway. So, the directed energy weapon on fire that hit that guy's house. I'm gonna say that was directed. By the way, that piece of wood going up the telephone pole that's Black on one side and unburned on the other side has a wire beneath it. That's where I got cut off. I was about to say on my last video where I was taking video of the guy's house that burned down next to me. And I say that word loosely because the house almost nothing burned. It was all in the yard all around. And the fire, the fireman went and punched holes in his roof and filled the place with water. So the place is uninhabitable. As far as an insurance write-off, it's total. As far as fire inside, he said, I can't see the guy that owns the place. I didn't talk to him, my stepdad did. Anyway, that telephone pole that split right up the middle, even the little burn, the little piece of wood, which is like a piece of corner molding in your house or on your cabinets, the corner molding that runs around the trim on the edge of your cabinets or in the corners of your house along the uh, where the two drywall pieces meet is a small piece of wood that's like a half round on one edge and either a flat on the other side. Anyway, that's pretty much what runs up that telephone pole. And it's to cover the wire that's right beneath it. And it's that wire that runs up the telephone pole that splits the black and burned on that side and the unburned on the other side. So that fire was definitely an electric fire and it's such high levels of electricity, we're calling it plasma. And if you look at all the wood on that property that burned, the whole thing happened in about 30 to 45 minutes total from the time it started till the time it was out. Now, for all of that, the space, the area, oh, I don't know, a few hundred square feet, to have burned as hot as it did and as thoroughly as it did in such a short time, there would have had to have been accelerant, like gasoline poured from one corner to the other, and that's the other way I know it was a directed energy. It's burned on the four corners, and it doesn't exceed the boundaries of his square lot. So I'm going to have to go back and get some more video, but I can tell you right now, yes, that was an energy fire, and yes, it was directed. And I'm not trying to convince anyone that doesn't want to be convinced. If you want to believe what you want to believe, you can continue, and nothing I ever say or show you will ever convince you otherwise. That's the cognitive dissonance I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But as for this fire that happened just around the corner, while I'm sitting there with Sidekick Tree, the tree that I collected that's been burned in these plasma fires that burn unevenly from the inside out, just like the wood on the property next door. And I called it before I even looked. I said maybe that guy was targeted because he ain't been taking care of his property. Sure enough, that's what happened. And when I was filming that over at his house saying, I don't know how I'd be able to handle all this stuff. If I was trying to go through this without having developed a relationship with God as I have over the last year, and just being the conspiracy theorist that I always was up until a year, a year and a half or so ago, I'd probably be pretty freaked out by the whole thing. Like, where are you gonna run though? Like Jack Johnson says, 
Which way will you run when it's always all around you? And the feeling lost and found you again. The feeling that we have no control around the sun. Some say is gonna be the new hell. Some say it's still too early to tell. Some say really ain't no myth at all. I don't know how I'd be handling this. By the way, side note, Mormons call their tithing fire insurance. Little, little inside joke that I heard from my ex-girlfriend. She says they just kind of snicker and it's kind of like a little joke. Fire insurance. Did you pay your fire insurance? They're tithing. They're 10% tithing. Inside joke is that they call it fire insurance. But that was long before the directed energy weapons that are the plasma fires happening everywhere. I'll bet they don't call it that anymore because it's, uh, it's kind of an inappropriate joke at this point, right? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe they're doubling down saying, you better pay your fire insurance. Because whether or not that guy that lives next to me got targeted by God, by whoever. See, you can use these weather weapons to, to collect money on the insurance or the investment. If you can make it hail or a late freeze in Florida and freeze the citrus crop and you own the citrus in California, the demand for the citrus in California just doubled when the crops supply and demand. When the supply, half the supply disappeared because all the citrus in Florida got frozen by a late spring freak storm that froze all the blossoms. So now all the oranges in, in, in Florida aren't going to grow this year. That means the price, the cost, the demand of all the oranges in California just doubled. You can make money using these directed energy weapons and weather, where, weather warfare technologies. Like insurance. That guy's house was an eyesore. He hadn't uh, mowed the grass in years. He was a hoarder. Apparently, from what I hear, the place was stacked to the rafters with junk. And when my stepdad said that, I said, yeah, well, maybe they, they said, here, we'll get rid of that shit for you since you can't seem to throw any of it away. My stepdad, I only got up and talked with him the next day for like five to ten minutes while he was on his way out the door to work. And he says, oh, yeah, they said uh, someone flipped a cigarette in the back corner. And that's when I told him, uh, <clears throat> no, not a cigarette. You look on that back corner that you're talking about, and I, I described the telephone pole where it's burned on one side, unburned on the other. After that fire, our internet and cable TV went out for about an hour. When I was talking with my stepdad the next morning, and he said, oh, that, uh, when I said it's uh, so someone flipped a cigarette, I said, who'd you hear that from? He says, well, that's what the fire department says. And when I told him, no, this is one of those electric fires, you look at the telephone pole burned on one side and not on the other in that back corner. He's like, well, yeah, the telephone company guy said it smoked all the wiring. Telephone, power lines, TV, internet, all of them got smoked all the way up the street. Fire doesn't do that. It's the overload of the energy that is being used, like James Grunvig says, sunspots and cell towers. Hammer and smack solar magnetic amplification causative configurator hammer high altitude meteorological manipulation effects research and they always got to do it under a research program just like harp high harp was high frequency atmospheric aurora research program because there are treaties international treaties signed that say we will not create weather weapons so we have to conduct these programs under the guise of research. Hammer is a research project. Harp is a research project. SMAC, S-M-A-C-C, -C, Solar Magnetic Amplification Causative Configurator. They're using solar plasma as part of these directed energy weapons where they can make it come up from the ground beneath your house. Using the grounding wire that goes into your house, smoke the whole wiring from the inside out, or set the ground on fire all around your house without even hardly touching the inside, apparently by the looks of my neighbor's house. So that, without a doubt, was a plasma fire and, in my opinion, was directed. Can't miss my exit 225. We got three miles. Um, on that note, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just bounce around here in a little bit. When I'm talking about DNA upgrades, 
I'm going to include some links in this video, including a video that I made before called Maynard Was a Mormon. Maynard, the lead singer of Tool. I'm going to include the link to the music video to a song titled 46 and 2. Those numbers are referring to chromosomes. Chromosomal counts, and it declares that there's three different kinds of people on this planet right now. The first is 42 and 2, and they consider themselves like a hive mind, a collective, where nothing that happens, everything that happens anywhere in the world is also happening inside them. In two miles, take exit 225 like for Utah 1 and 32 100 okay? north. And it says, there's only a couple of these tribes left, aboriginals of Australia and maybe a couple of tribes in Africa. The rest of us are an in-between species, in between 42 and 2. We are all 44 and 2. And those who develop consciousness reach 46 and 2. You know who said that? Druvlov Melchizedek, as in the Mormons practice the Melchizedek priesthood, the Melchizedek order. And if you've read Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code, you know about the Merovingian bloodline. They are represented by the beehive. They are represent they are said to be the lineage of Christ. And if you know that people like Warren Jeffs, who was running a polygamist compound, claims to be the bloodline of Christ, who those kind of people get disavowed by the mainstream Mormon church who says, they're not with us. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but they're not with us. They're the FLDS, fundamentalist Latter-day Saints. Okay? So there's a few more ingredients to the uh, DNA upgrade stew. Merovingian bloodline, Melchizedek priesthood. In half a mile, take and exit 225 for the Utah 1 and 32 The development of consciousness is referred to in that music video 46 and 2, where it talks about the inner shadow, where you must traverse that inner your inner being, lest you project it onto others. And it gives you different layers Take of exit levels of consciousness. Then turn left onto Hold Utah on. 132 here. East. While I, uh, while I do my thing. Alright. So, um, a lot of these new agey practices talk about doing shadow work, going inside, having someone who helps you take that inner journey and asks you questions because you hide the truth about yourself from yourself so well that even if you know the process and the formula, just like a psychologist has to go to another psychologist to be analyzed, to be told what kind of uh, mental pathologies they are engaging in, even though they know all the same science of mental pathologies, they can't analyze themselves. They gotta go to another shrink to be analyzed. Well, new agers do shadow work to help you identify the parts of your shadow and your inner being that you can't identify by yourself because you hide it from yourself so tricky, so, so well, so effectively, that even if you know the formula to decoding and un, un, uh, uncovering those parts of your inner being that we call the shadow, you gotta have someone else do the work with you and for you. Well, that whole song, 46 and 2, is singing about the shadow. 46 and 2, just ahead of me, is only a one-liner at the end of the whole chorus. The chorus is all about my shadow, and I want to feel the cleansing that I've endured through my shadow work. So, that DNA upgrade, according to Melchizedek Priesthood and uh, Maynard of Tool, that DNA upgrade is incumbent upon your shadow work. Unless you develop consciousness, you don't advance to the 46 and 2 chromosomal level. We are an in-between 42 and 2, 44 and 2, or 46 and 2. We are an in-between species. According to that uh, Druvlov Melchizedek, and doing that shadow work, that inner shadow work, taking the hero's journey, traversing the inner being, is how you advance to 46 and 2. So, that whole stuff about a DNA upgrade might not be so hocus pocus airy fairy BS, and it might not just be new age BS, but I would say 
Mormonism is the closest thing to a New Age religion that there is. They have a living prophet. That means they add to their canonized doctrine on a regular basis new revelation that is received by the prophet. And they are not opposed to other sources of truth. For example, in the most recent sacrament meeting I went to, he was referencing, I can't even say the news name, it's a Chinese guy's name, Lao Tzu or something like that, who says, watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your words and watch your words because your words become your deeds and watch your deeds because your deeds become your character and watch your character because your character becomes your destiny. Now I would also say there is, so, so what I'm saying there